important uh, if we uh, if we uh, look them uh, with the perspective of uh, need examination in fact they were important for the board as well so let's start with here so out of this population interaction means how the two different kind of the population interact right so the first kind of the population interaction you here uh, what you have to take care of you have to take care of this one as well uh, these symbols as well sometime you will get these kind of the symbol plus and minus kind of the symbol plus symbol means this will be the beneficial for indivisible and minus symbol means this will not be beneficial for the uh, individual or particular population so what is the predation you know the predation is a very simple phenomenon and food chain where uh, prey and predator they are they have a particular relation right so prey is fully dependent on the uh, predation practice uh, so uh, look what is the predation in predation the relationship there is a fully dependency of one kind of the species over another kind of the species for the survival and the food that that thing you have to take care of for the survival and the food so here the prey is uh, uh, actually predator is particular depend on the prey for food only right the purpose of killing is food only and food and survival the one that gets preyed for the food is called prey right so prey that will be go for the minus one right because it will be harmed right so there is a demerit or it will get harmed and the species which feed on another kind of the species is termed as the predator so predator will enjoy means it will be benefited and it will be right not benefited or it will get lost right so here is the relationship so there will be plus for the predator and the, uh, negative for the prey so what is the other benefits of the predation practice actually other benefit of the predation predation practice they maintain the population of prey right and they also maintain the diversity two thing you have to take care of it how they maintain the diversity suppose that if there is a very big grassland or a very big area where this and thousands of deer or lakhs of the deer over there right so what will happen thousands of deer are there right but there is a no predator means nobody is there to uh, uh, kill them or to control their population so what will happen because of the abundant of the space abundance of the uh, uh, their uh, uh, food what will do they will start reproduction and their uh, population will increase by exponential manner so when their population will increase what they will do they will compete with the other grazing species they will not allow the other other species to graze over there right and they will kill the other species which are inferior to them right by this way they will kill or or um, uh, uh, those species which are their competitor in uh, uh, feeding habit or share the same feeding kind of the habit they will be removed from that area by this way the population will decrease right so they maintain the population diversity uh, they maintain the population of prey first thing main and second thing they maintain the diversity right so there are two benefit of the predation so these are the other than food benefit there are two other benefit which uh, predator maintain right now come to the competition competition food and right uh, uh, there can be competition for two things food and species normally the competition remains for the two thing that is the food and species right space right so if there are two species which are sharing the common food like there will be definitely there will be competition between them for the food it is the interaction between the two or more of two species of organism when they compete so competition is limited competition is for the limited resources it will be for the limited resources which all the competitor want to control means every competitor want to acquire it want to control for over the limited resource at the same time these resources can be area what can be resources these resources can be area food water or any other right so normally it is a food area food and water right so that is called competition uh sometimes some animals they maintain they um, uh, do the different practice to uh, remove this competition as most of the uh, most of the forest uh, there is a competition for predator uh, to prey right 
so they prey on the same kind of species leopard tiger hyenas jackal they all prey on the deer right so there is a competition these all are from the different species but there is a competition because their food is the common right every everyone want to uh, uh, maintain the uh, uh, that is the uh, uh, they maintain the uh, supremacy or they maintain they want to control over the, uh, the area uh, right so by this way what exactly they do uh, most of the animal like all the animal from the cat family they urinate and they demarcate their area so that the competitor do not enter in that area right so but uh, like this in the same um, uh, way uh, some predator uh, do not uh, follow this practice they have demarcated the area they enter that area they hunt and they what they do they hide the uh, that uh, hunted animal like leopard it hunt in the area of the lion and tiger and it uh, hide the, uh, uh, the that that food or uh, that prey dead prey body in the uh, trees and all other uh, other spaces right and after when the lion is not in that area then they feed on that right so these are the practices uh, uh, to avoid the competition the very important thing is that so i have told you that there will be uh, competition will be from the uh, it may be within the species it may be <coughs> from different species as well so competition may be of two types <coughs> intra specific means within the species or inter specific between two species within the species or between two species right there is a very important example which is given in your ncert book that you have to take care of right in inter specific where the different species are there in for the competition uh there is a lake in united state uh the competition is for food between the uh, flamingo bird which is common visitor and two uh, like uh, and another uh, species of the fishes which are resident fishes which are found in that uh, lake right because they have uh, their common food is plankton right zoo plankton so both uh, resident fishes these resident fishes and flamingo both share the common food that is a zoo plankton so there is a competition between the flamingo and common fishes right these both are the unrelated species but yes there is a competition because both share the both are dependent on the same kind of the food their feeding habit is same there is a one principle that is the gauss principle right so that principle is called it has been this question i have been asked multiple times right and it's still it's important so there is a gauss principle for the competitive exclusion principle what is the gauss competitive exclusion principle uh according to this principle the two closely related species right two closely related species which are dependent on the same resources right if there are two species closely related species which are dependent on the same food resource right the superior when superior species will uh, succeed or remove the inferior species from that area that is called gauss competitive exclusion principle right for example in galapagos and island there were some resident turtle which used to eat the green grass but when the goat were introduced on that area what happened goat goat were better grazer right and they they graze all the all the uh, uh, grasses right by this way the, they excluded uh, these uh, turtle from those uh, area right so the superior one will succeed or superior one will remove the inferior one or uh, the um, uh, from that particular area so this is called gauss competitive exclusion principle and that belongs to the competition part now the third one is the parasitism so you can explain the gauss exclusion yeah. okay fine look suppose that there is a particular species at a particular area and that area is dominated by the grass right it is a fully lush green area right and the predominant uh, vegetation is the grass over there now there are two species for example there are deer and there are goats right number of goats are less 
they cannot they are not that much better grazer but deer are better grazer they are more powerful what will happen deer will uh, deer will uh, throw away these goat from those area right they will kick them from that area and they will dominate that area they will remove the competition this is called so why they remove because deer are more swift more powerful larger animal better grazer and fast right by this way they will remove this goat from their area right so one superior species when they share the same area but the superior species remove the inferior species from that area this principle is called gauss competitive ex exclusion principle means the two species competing for the same resources if two species competing for the same resources the inferior will be removed by the superior species this is called competitive exclusion principle of gauss got it yes sir clear now the third one is that is the parasitism you know tell me one thing the snake bite a human or any any animal it suppose a snake bite a deer and deer die or uh, malaria like uh, the uh, this one a uh, mosquito bite us and uh, it kill us right with the by malaria lion a kill a human right so what is the difference between the predation and parasitic both are killing another can you repeat the question yes look a mosquito can kill a human mosquito is a parasite it can kill a human right by because yes, it, it, it disease it, it spread the multiple disease dengue uh, malaria chikungunya and all that kind of disease right so mosquito kill the human means mosquito is a parasite lion also kill the human right so both are killing the human then what is the difference between the predation and the parasitism tell me samaira yes sir please keep on thinking samaira iram ana abino so there are few new people nimra is that your first class abino is already there hazar is already there ana is already there Tania, is it your first class? Uh, okay, Tania is telling parasite live on host. Yes, parasite live on host. That is also true. What is the major difference? Look, both are killing the, both are killing the particular well, organism. But in the parasites, they like stay inside the body. Okay. any other difference look when we uh, talk about the ecology the major difference is that predator kill the organism for i have underlined that thing kill the organism for a particular purpose that is the food only right either eat the whole organism or eat a particular part of the organism right yes that is very intelligent answer the parasite cannot live without the host that is also true first thing second important thing so predator always have intention to kill the particular organism for the food parasite never have intention to kill the organism to kill the host because if parasite will kill the host it will die itself so parasite do not have intention to kill the host while the predator always have intention to kill the host got it that is the difference they don't want like mosquito don't want to spread uh, malaria chikungunya sometime by default these diseases is spread with them right either they do not have intention to kill the host because they are getting continuously food from they are dependent on the host for the food so why they will kill if i have a particular uh, uh, fruit garden why i will cut down the tree 
because I am getting the fruit from that product, right? So parasite do not have intention. Mosquito do not have intention to kill them, right? But predator always have intention to kill them. Like you have to think like this way, right? But yes, uh, uh, Sanya also have a very uh, like uh, given a very good example that parasite cannot. That is also a very major difference. Parasite cannot normally 99% parasite cannot live without host, right? But the uh, predator can live without their host, like their prey because they have multiple prey. Okay. So parasitism. Parasitism involve one organism feed on another organism. One organism feed on another organism. It is a case one-sided symbiosis, right? Here one side, one one uh, like the host uh, host is uh, not benefited. Like it is it is it is. Uh, getting harm but uh, the another one is that is a parasite that is getting the benefit so sometime parasites are dependent for the nutrition some point sometime for the delta right the parasite multiply causing the uh, causing the harm to the host right uh, so this is the parasite and uh, host relationship so can anybody tell me what is the uh, brood parasites. Tell me some What is the brood parasitism? Any one of you? Brood, come on, brood parasitism. This question has been asked many times and it is still important. You will get this question from the previous year paper. Brood parasitism. No one? Someone is telling. Tanya. When some, when some egg, egg bird lay egg on. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, Tanya. Very good. Uh, the best example is Tanya. He's saying that when some some bird lay its egg on the somebody uh, somebody's nest, right? That's true. Example, Tanya. Any one of you example of brood parasitism? Very good, very good, excellent. So look, brood parasitism basically the cuckoo never make cuckoo means quail. Cuckoo never make its oh, nest. So what it do, it lay egg on the nest of crow. Crow is not that much intelligent so that it could recognize its own egg or cuckoo's egg. They both look like similar. So what happened, crow, uh, uh, crow take care of all those eggs, right, and hatch those eggs. So after hatching, when the egg rupture, and the small cuckoo come out, then crow come to know that they are not their babies, right? So this kind of, it means the quail is making, uh, uh, this uh, cuckoo is making pool of crow, right? So this is called brood parasitism or social parasitism. Means if you are making uh, pool to someone for your own benefit, you are also a brood parasite. Got it? Is that clear, Arpit? Samara? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remember, this is the only best example, and this is the example which I know, right? Brute parasitism. This is the example, only example which I have studied yet. Okay. The fourth one is that is the competition, right? Common cellism, sorry. Common cellism. So, here I will tell you some extra information which is very important, and the question have been asked. But this belongs to something like this is not a part of ecology. So there is a first, let me tell you the example. Let me discuss the example. Then I'll tell you the definition. In common cellism, I have made two signs, plus and zero. Zero means the host is neither harmed nor benefited. But the another individual means one individual is neither harmed nor benefited. Another is benefited, right? Suppose that there is a there is a some person, right? 
uh, he is getting benefit of me, right? He is getting benefited of me, and I am not neither benefited nor get harmed, right? So suppose that I have a, a building at the nice location. I allowed some uh, a poor person to uh, a fruit seller to uh, sell fruit in front of my house. Right? I allowed. Right. So uh, neither I am benefited because neither I am taking the money from him, or nor I am getting harm. Neither he is uh, like doing any harm to me. Right. But that person is get get benefited. So there is a relationship between me and him that is called common service. Right. That is common common service. So uh, there is a Beautiful kind of the tree, uh, beautiful kind of the plant, not tree. These plants are known as orchid, right? So orchid are a type of the plant. These orchid plant grow on the mango, right? So these orchid plant they grow on mango, grow on mango. So basically they are found in northeastern Meghalaya, right? Northeastern part of the country and Meghalaya, they are found, right? So these Plant or these orchid they grow over there, they are naturally. I have seen them, right? So, these uh, this is the mango tree. These orchid neither take the food from the mango tree nor they are taking water and nutrition. What they are doing, they are just taking the shelter, right? So, these tree grow on the mango, right? Mango tree, they are green tree, they are photosynthetic, they can make their own food, right? Neither take water, so these orchid. Let me write it down, right? Neither water nor food, right? So they neither take the water nor take the food, right? Then where they get the water? That is the important question. This is the question which you need to notify. The roots of orchid are hygroscopic. Hygro means moisture right so hygroscopic root they have a particular kind of the root these roots are hygroscopic let me write it down more clearly so these roots are hygroscopic root. what does it mean not root what is it these roots are hygroscopic root Hygroscopic root was the function of hygroscopic root. Hygroscopic roots are those roots which absorb moisture from absorb. It's part of physiology. Absorb moisture from air. Right. These roots absorb moisture from the air and provide water to the plant. One very important thing. So, first thing the hygroscopic roots are found on the orchid. Second important thing which you know to down, these hygroscopic root have a dead tissue layer. That tissues are called velament tissues. So velament tissues, I have written over here, velament tissues are responsible for absorption of the water. Both of the questions have been asked in medical exam, different medical examinations, right? So hygroscopic orchids, so orchid neither harm the mango tree nor get benefited. But orchid is getting benefited because orchid is getting the shelter from the mango plant right so this kind of the relationship is called common citizen it is a unique kind of the relationship where one species of the organism is dependent on each other for the food or survival and get benefited but without harming each other anymore anyone right or anyone this is called common citizen. is that clear to all of you let yes, me ask yes, you. Sir. Okay, very good. Iram, clear? Nimra, is it clear? Are you getting it? Because you are also, I think you are new one. Nimra? Are you getting it? Or not? Tell me. You can message me if you don't want to speak. Okay, there is a one more important uh, example. Clownfish and sea anemone, right? This is clownfish. This fish is clownfish. So clownfish is getting benefited. What kind of benefit? Clownfish is clownfish is getting shelter. Clownfish 
clown face is getting shelter right clown face is getting shelter and uh, who is providing the shelter this is called sea anemone it is providing the shelter right uh, actually the sea anemone uh, remains attached it's a kind of the animal and uh, this sea anemone it get attached uh, it remains adhere or sessile at particular rock right clown fish lives between these tentacles of the sea anemone right this uh, these tentacles do not harm to the clown fish and clown fish get the protection from it right so uh, this is the also amensalism example uh, example of amensalism uh, even this question have been asked so you have to remember the both of the answers both of the uh, uh, examples first thing you have to remember the this fact that velament tissues hygroscopic root right and the example of uh, common cells is it clear arpit clear yes sir very good the another one that is a mutualism or symbiotic relation so mutualism is also known as the symbiotic keep on noting down or keep on taking the screenshot whatever you want you will get the link of this uh, uh, this file right so i have talked to my team they they gives the link of this file uh, you can read it right at your home but still if you want to note it down because while when i show you the ppt i kept on telling you something different something extra so you can note it down if you want right mutualism or symbiotic relationship or symbiosis so both are the same thing symbiotic relationship symbiosis or mutualism when we both get benefited from the each other this is called the symbiosis here the symbol will be plus and plus right plus for the one and individual both get benefited no one is harmed so the best example is the lichen lichen is a kind of the plant which is the combination of algae and fungi right the best thing is with the algae it is it, it provide the food right so algae is a green right we have already uh, studied that algae are the green plant right and they make the food by the process of photosynthesis right with the process of photosynthesis they make the food, right uh, fungi is a fungi is a of white color right it do not make food right do not make food. but the best thing is that uh, fungi is able to absorb the absorb the mineral right from where absorb the mineral and water from the soil but it cannot uh, the but the algae cannot may absorb the water because it do not have root right so algae do not have root so if do not have root then how it will absorb the water how it will absorb the uh, mineral so what happen algae provide food to fungi in return fungi provide water and mineral to the algae so both are helping each other this is called the mutualism or symbiotic relationship between the algae and fungi look in lichen the algal partner is called phycobiome and the fungal partner is called mycobiome so lichens are the combination of two things mycobiome and phycobiome mycobiome means fungi partner and phycobiome means algal partner here both are helping each other is that clear to all of you yes sir yes sir great there is a one more example that is the mycorrhiza this this even this question is very important okay these are all the all are the question they have been asked already so what is the mycorrhiza phycobiont mycobiont this question have been asked that's why i have written it in a bracket so mycorrhiza mycorrhiza actually this is found in the uh, gymnosperm like cycas and pinus so in cycas and pinus around the root of these gymnosperm what happen uh there is a mantle or cover of the fungi right so fungi provide uh, the water and mineral to the roots of gymnosperm in return gymnosperm provide them food right so this is the uh, example of mutualism clear yes sir great so this was all about this chapter from my end uh in case any one of you have any doubt those who are the new one like they are, this is the first class for them so still uh, if any one of you have any uh question or query regarding the 
population interaction or regarding the organism and population chapter right you can ask quick two to three minutes for you to go through with your ncrt ask me if you have any doubt any question else we'll move to the next chapter. sir once the crow sees that the eggs once the eggs hatch and the crow sees that those eggs are not his so doesn't he kill the uh, children of the cuckoo cuckoo no no they do not they do not kill <laughs> they do not they do not kill the cuckoos right they just even they grow there at the in the crow's nest and they flew from there right they got is there like cuckoo is taking emotional benefit of another organism group any question from any of the topic right then we'll start with the next chapter which is also very important ecosystem part friends and that is a big one that is also big. not that that big this organism and population was very big chapter so those Sir, who have joined us today the... let me tell you yes yes please someone someone is on can you share the last slide uh, about the mycorrhiza part? Yes, yes. My, this one, mycorrhiza. This one. Mycorrhiza is the combination of gymnosperm and fungi, right? So, fungi provide because the root of the gymnosperm are weaker one. They are not efficient, right? The gymnosperm, the roots are not efficient. The roots are not efficient to absorb water absorb water so what happened fungi helped them to absorb the water and mineral in return the uh, gymnosperm gives food to the fungi clear yes sir okay so those who are not uh, in the last class and they have joined from today uh, this is for them i want to tell you in ecology what is the more important part so uh, look this is response to abiotic factor this part this part go through with this part right uh, after the class this one right so there is a regulator conformers partial regulator migration and suspension right so these are the part you have to take care of this this is very important part the second thing is that uh, growth models these two models exponential growth curve and logistic growth curve this one and then the population attraction which we discussed today these are very 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 important part from this chapter if you will miss them you will miss the question, right so don't miss the question go through with your uh, ncrt go through with your this ppt after the class still if you have any doubt you are welcome with your doubt in the next class right so should we move to the next chapter can you just explain the formulae that are given in the growth models growth models Actually, yeah, I'll explain, but they are not that much important. But I'll 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 let you know. Look, uh, in this first, come to the exponential growth curve. So in this growth curve, there is a formula, R n. R n. What is the R R n? That is the rate of the uh, rate of growth of population density, right? So growth in the population density, rate of growth of population. Density. The rate by which population density is growing, increasing, right? So is equal to dn. What is the dn? Change in the population and dt change in the time, right? So change in the population upon change in the time is equal to rate of growth of population density. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I have explained in the class. If there is a backup in the video, the last video you can go through with it. Because uh, they will ask you that uh, there is a population of the deer and there is a population of the mosquito that is increasing in this this like two three line question. Then which of the following growth curve is applicable to them and all that? Sigmoid growth curve, right? Here this is the sigmoid growth curve. In sigmoid growth curve, look the formula is that d n upon d t, right? So d n upon d t is equal to that is the same thing we have studied. That is the d n upon d t. That the rate of population growth. This one, dn upon. D. So this is dn change in the population density, dt change in the time is equal to rate of the population density. K k is the carrying capacity. So carrying capacity. This, this line shows the carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is that capacity beyond which any ecology or ecos ecosystem cannot tolerate the population growth. Right. 
took that there will be value of k n is the population k is that same constant carrying capacity so from k minus n upon k dn upon dt you will get the value of r and here right so that's how we calculate from the formula but the formula you won't get the question from is it clear is that formula clear or if you have any doubt you can ask me clear yes sir so these were the important one so let's move in the next chapter that is the ecosystem it is equally important like organism and population guys this is for the only new student uh, which i am telling you who have joined us today uh, there are some old student who have joined today right so i want to tell you like arpit is the oldest student but he have joined me today so uh, and for those who are the new one who have joined just today like sania and uh, one more nimra right so look from the ecology you will get the number of the question good number of the question it have a good basis but one thing i want to tell you the questions will be lengthy maybe two line three line question options will be lengthy they may be in the statement form which of the following correct or wrong statement form but the answers will be easy the most of the question will be conceptual if you will read them easily if you will understand the question you will get there so never get uh, feared from these question this lengthy question right increase your speed and attempt all the question of this ecology most of the student get feared while uh, reading the uh, question uh, because the time pressure work on them time pressure is that they think that if i'll read all the questions and if i won't get the answer what will it will be the waste of the time so don't think like that read the question carefully with a fast speed you'll get the answer and attempt all the questions of it it is Good to attempt the marks from this section. Look. So, the first and foremost thing is that, what is the ecosystem? Okay. Ecosystem we have studied in the previous chapter. What are the ecosystem? So, pond is itself an ecosystem. Let me tell you first what is the ecosystem. Look. ecosystem this is a example of a pond ecosystem all right in this ecosystem what are the things are there look this is a pond inside the pond it is filled with the water this is the water so water is present uh the sun is the source of energy sun rays are coming and plant are making the food with the help of sun rays means they are work like producer the plants are eaten by the fishes right so they are the herbivores and primary consumer fishes are being eaten by the uh, secondary consumer that is the carnivore right so this is the food chain what will happen one fine day the plant have to die or their excretory material fish have to die crocodile have to die their excretory material that will be decomposed by the fungi and bacteria decomposer they will decompose them when they will they are decomposing them what will happen these bacteria will break down the molecule release the mineral and mineral will be again recycled through the plant which are present in the water and when they are decomposing they will break down the bonds of complex organic molecule due to breakers the bond energy will be released and that energy will again go back to the environment so what is the ecosystem ecosystem is the system where so there are two kind of the things are present in this ecosystem what are those two kind of thing biotic and abiotic factor what are the biotic factor means living factor and another factor is non living factor they are called abiotic factor in the non living factor there is a air there is a water there is a soil there is a energy there is a temperature there is a pressure what is biotic factor all living producer animals and microbes so ecosystem is that system where a biotic and biotic factor interact with each other and they maintain the they maintain the cycle of energy this kind of the system is called ecosystem right hope it should be clear to all of you look now what we are going to study this was just i was telling you that what are the ecosystem 
in ecosystem there are two part of ecosystem the term ecosystem was given by ag tensley in 1935 remember this question have been asked many times right ecosystem can be of two type terrestrial means like land ecosystem and aquatic means the water ecosystem look now the ecosystem have two kind of this part two part we can divide physical structure and function in physical structure there are two thing in ecosystem biotic factor and abiotic factor we have studied already that what are the biotic factor what are the abiotic factor right so we know that what are the biotic factor what are the abiotic factor right now come to the next one the functions there are four function of ecosystem the whole chapter is dedicated to these functions so there are four function of ecosystem productivity decomposition energy flow and nutrient cycle is that clear yes now come to the first function that is the productivity what is the unit of productivity that is the question many time i have this they seen this question in previous year question paper so what is the can you tell me what is the uh, unit of productivity and what is the productivity actually anyone you must have studied it can i repeat the question sir what is the productivity actually productivity or primary productivity is the same thing so the amount of work someone can get done and the amount of the the amount of work someone can get done okay and limited amount of time okay and when we talk about in terms of ecology so the amount of biomass produced uh, something like that. very good amount of the biomass that is energy flow okay very good very good attempt look uh, let me explain you uh, uh, with uh, more clarity right look uh, productivity when we calculate the productivity in ecology we calculate the uh, like she told me that the amount of the biomass we told the amount of the biomass produced right that is true uh the ecosystem may be grassland ecosystem forest ecosystem pond ecosystem ocean ecosystem any kind of thing suppose that this is a grassland ecosystem so we will take the area of 1 by 1 1 meter length and 1 meter width area right 1 by 1 area this area of 1 by 1 meter means 1 meter square area we'll take this area in this area 1 meter square area in the and we will take the time of 1 year within the 1 year time period right the amount of grass biomass produced in one year will be called productivity so what is the productivity amount of the biomass produced in a unit area in a year is called primary productivity now what can be the unit unit have been asked many times what can be the unit of primary productivity kilo calorie per meter square per year or kilo calorie per meter square per year we can write like this way or gram per meter square per year that can be the primary productivity clear is that clear samara yes, are you listening samara so you yes. are not okay okay so that is the primary product now what is the grass gross primary productivity gross primary productivity is the same thing right what is that the gross primary productivity is the same that is called gpp is equal to primary what is the primary productivity that same thing is called gross primary productivity now what is the net primary productivity look a plant is making 100 kg a tree is making 100 kg food, food fruits or food in a year but out of those 100 kg will it save everything no not at all it will utilize some amount for itself 
because it have it require it have to go undergo for the respiration it require the energy so it will respire something so some amount will be utilized by the plant itself so suppose that plant have made 100 kg food that is the gross primary productivity gpp right now out of that 10 kg have utilized plant its for itself then the net primary productivity will be 10, uh, that will be 90 kg only right so net primary productivity is equal to gross primary productivity plus respiratory losses respiratory losses means the food utilized by right is that clear yes sir now what is the secondary productivity the rate of formation of new organic matter by the consumers suppose that the net primary productivity is there there is some rabbit which is eating the grass every day in this grassland right so the biomass which is produced in the body of rabbit that will be called secondary productivity right so that is the gross primary productivity less primary productivity and secondary productivity this is something about the product okay so you can explain secondary productivity again secondary productivity suppose that look uh, suppose that uh, there is a grassland you have a garden in that garden in a year 100 kg grass is produced right and out of that 100 kg grass the 90 kg is the net primary product that 90 kg is eaten by your rabbit now when you put your rabbit when you they take an, uh, a rabbit child you purchase a rabbit child it was of only 100 gram right it is eating the uh, grass every day and after the end of the year you have measured the mass of the that mass of that rabbit which you have purchased of 100 gram now it is of 3 kg right so the secondary productivity of that grassland will be 2 kg 900 uh, 2 kg 900 gram that will be the secondary productivity. so the rate of formation of new organic matter by consumer is called secondary productivity is that clear yes sir okay. now the next chapter is decomposition this is the detritus food chain or decomposition food chain you have to remember it how the decomposition takes place right or how did the detritus food chain work what is the detritus so detritus is the dead body of the plant or animal or excretory product of the plant or animal which fall on the ground and this is the raw material for the decomposer that is called detritus right so fallen leaves old leaves or damaged leaves those so those fallen leaves from any tree they are the detritus basically so detritus is dead raw material of plant or animal this detritus first it is when it fall on the ground it undergo the next step that is called first step that is called fragmentation so detritus undergo fragmentation fragmentation the snail and earthworm eat these dead leaves and dead part and they will break them in a small fragment of the organic material a small part of the organic material that is called fragment after that what will be happen that the fragment of uh, this the raw the uh, minerals and nutri nutrients which are which are uh, uh, now they will get dissolved with the water and these mineral and nutrient which it dissolve with the water after the fragmentation right these will start moving towards the inner side of the ground with the water that is called leaching right so leaching leaching is the process in which minerals are washing away from the top layer of the soil right now oh, i have a question for you right which condition which condition uh, that is a question which i have been asked in aims which condition promote the leaching Tell me. Tell me the conditions which promote the leaching. Anyone know? 
then uh, let me uh, give you the hint when i am asking about the conditions I mean high temperature low temperature high moisture low moisture right high light intensity low light intensity that is the condition please write it down Fair high enough. temperature high temperature and high moisture high moisture it promote leaching right high temperature and high moisture promote the uh, leaching and low temperature and low moisture low moisture it decrease the leaching process and leaching is not good for this one means washing of because why because minerals are washed away from it right now after leaching what will happen now these snail and earthworm they have broken down these organic matter into small small molecules now bacteria will start their action bacteria will start catabolic reaction means catabolic bacteria will break down into simple molecules right what will happen now the humification will take place what is the humification this dark color substance okay very good hydro I have given the good example answer high temperature very good nitrogen excess more water soluble yes two things uh, high temperature and more water soluble substances they will be good for the thing. very good excellent so now what is happened right the top layer that this these organic material this black color organic material formed uh, after the fragmentation that will mix with the soil and the soil plus mineral plus organic matter is known as humus right so formation of humus is called humification right when this organic matter this uh, mineral uh, they will mix with humus they will be called uh, this process will be called humification after humification what will happen this mineralization mineral will mix mixing of the mineral in soil those minerals will get mixed in the soil that is called mineralization so these are the step of these are the step of Detritus right. Is that clear? If any one of you have question, please ask me. But it is important. Clear, guys? Detritus food chain. Arpit? Yes, sir. Okay, very yes. good. Abhi now, are you getting it? Anna? Anna? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Fine. Great. So, come to the next one. Energy flow. Guys, remember this chart, right? It is very simple, but you will get confused. There is a confusion. What is confusion? There is confusion is also very simple kind of stuff. So, uh, this flow chart will start from the lower side. The plants are called primary producer. Why? Because they make the food. But these primary producer come on, come under the first trophic level, right? They are the means plant will always come in the first trophic level of the food chain. These will be eaten by primary consumer. For primary consumer are basically herbivores, right? For example, grasshopper, zooplankton, deer, right? And they'll come in the second trophic. Level. Now, after primary consumer. There will be secondary consumer. Secondary consumer will come in third profit. They are the basically carnivores, right? Those who, who eat the flesh, right? So uh, in secondary consumer, there will be birds, wolf, right? So these are the secondary consumer and some carnivore fishes, right? And tertiary consumer, they will be come in the fourth profit level and they are called top carnivores or top consumers right 
so the example is man and the lion they can eat anyone right so this is the trophic level and uh, the food level like product the food level is that clear hope it should be clear what is the par any one of you par come on guys tell me pr no that is photosynthetic remember you must have studied this thing in your uh, 11th class syllabus in the uh, plant physiology part photosynthesis chapter look photosynthetically active radiation that is called par the amount of the light or spectrum of the light sunlight which is which is usable for the plant or which is utilized by the plant for photosynthesis is called par it may be 2 to 10% only 2 to 10% of the sunlight is utilized by the plant right so you have to remember pr is 2 to 10% now there is a 10% law who will tell me what is a 10% law no one what only 10%, 10 of the energy is passed on from each trophic only 10% of energy is passed on. very good look very good so what is the 10% law only 10% energy is transferred from one trophic level to another to another during food chain or in food chain in food chain right look the grasses are eating the rabbit rabbit is eaten by wolf and wolf is eaten by lion so suppose that there is a 1000 kilo calorie energy in the grasses when rabbit will eat it the only 10% energy means 100 calorie kilo calorie will be transferred from grasses to the rabbit now the rabbit is being eaten by the wolf so only the 10% energy will be transferred means it will get only the 10 kilo calorie energy wolf is eaten by human or lion so only 10% energy is transferred that will be 1 kilo calorie right so that is the sequence that is called trophic level and sequence is that clear yes sir very good so the my question is that is that 10% law these are the food chains right food chain and number of the food chain they make the food webs right so this is very common very simple so tell me guys is this 10% law is correct or is there any exception or is there something is it applicable to all food chain or not come on arpit 10% law applicable everywhere iram iram today you are not speaking sir the 10% law is not applicable to the detritus food chain right it will not be applicable over there tania any idea ana have you know emra look 10% law is only applicable on grass Note it down. 10% law is only applicable on the grassland ecosystem. It is not applicable 
for it is not applicable for other ecosystem it is not applicable for other ecosystem now come to the ecological pyramid so these were the uh, the function now come to the ecological pyramid ecological pyramids are also very important it seems very simple but it will confuse you when you will solve the previous question you will uh, you will encounter those difficulties let me tell you let me ask you i will give you option listen me carefully that is a question for you pyramid of number you all must have studied in class 12th and you all must have i think recently you all must have studied recently you all must have given your board examination and this is the important topic for the board examination as well so i have a question my question is that the pyramid of number in the forest ecosystem will be i repeat it pyramid of the number in forest ecosystem will be erect inverted erect inverted d shape none of above who will tell me inverted okay sir erect okay anyone else you will get the answer of your question here only i'll tell you now let me explain you pyramid of number in pyramid of number the number of organism at every trophic level is trophic level are taken right so pyramid pyramid are the method of showing the trophic levels right so here we count the number of organism at every trophic level means how many so suppose that there is a food chain how many grasses are there how many insects are there how many snakes are there how many so grasses are being eaten by insect insects are eaten by snake snakes are eaten by eagle so we'll calculate the so look here the grasses are producer insects are primary consumer snakes are secondary consumer and eagles are top consumer right so look here the number of the grasses will be definitely will be more there will be less insect who are eating the grasses there will be lesser uh, snake which are eating the uh, insect and there will be the least eagles which are eating the so here the pyramid of uh, in grassland ecosystem the pyramid will be erect right means upright erect or you can say upright upright now look here in the pond ecosystem algae or phytoplankton they are number of numerous they are eaten by small fishes small fishes eaten by large fishes large fishes are eaten by the crocodile you know in any lake there will be more algae and phytoplankton numerous algae the number of small fishes will be layer larger will be more uh, lesser and the crocodile will be the least right so here also in pond ecosystem the pyramid will be erect look this is the forest ecosystem here the pyramid will not be in pyramid of number will not be erect it will be d shape that was the question so you will get this kind of the question what i have asked you that was a previous question a previous year question right so look because there is a large banyan tree but the number of birds are eating its fruit and taking the shelter deers are eating its leaves right elephant are also eating its leaves means the primary consumers are more now the birds are eating by snake and deers are eaten by wolf their number of the lesser and the lions are lesser right so this is the irregular right so this is the irregular pyramid so pyramid of number in forest ecosystem or tree ecosystem it will be erect now come to the parasite ecosystem. even this question have been asked in the pyramid of number the parasite uh, uh, parasite eco, uh, in parasite ecosystem right so it will be inverted why there is a single tree number of birds dependent on that 
on the body of birds, there are numerous parasites. Every bird has thousands of parasites. And every parasite have lakhs of the bacteria or thousands of the bacteria. Right. So, parasite ecosystem is inverted in the terms of pyramid of now. Clear or not? Tell me. You have to remember this. But sir, if you take into account all the trees in a forest ecosystem, then the trees will be... No, 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 no. We'll just count a single tree. Because when you count the food chain, if you can, yes, if you have a garden, you can count the... Suppose that there are 20 trees, you'll count 20 trees. Then you have to count the, all the... Uh, either you can take one tree, then you will call uh, count all the birds... Uh, sorry, only the birds which are living on that tree. The parasite living on those birds only. The bacteria living on those parasites only. But if you want to count, you can count all the <coughs> forest. Then you have to count. If you are counting all the trees, then you have to count all the birds. Then all the parasites. Then all the bacteria. Got it? Yes, sir. So you can take the one exam, one sample or take the whole sample. All same. Okay. So this was the pyramid of number. Now let's talk about the pyramid of the biomass. Second kind of the pyramid. Pyramid of biomass. Here in pyramid of biomass, what we take, that is also important. Here we always take dry weight. Dry weight means, suppose that uh, a plant have produced 100 apple. Those are the food. So we will not count the weight of those apple. We will dehydrate them, remove the water. Then we will count the weight of those apple. That is called the biomass, right? So here in pyramid of biomass, we take the gram dry weight of the per unit area. In grassland ecosystem, the pyramid of biomass will be erect. Why? The biomass of the grass in the lawn will be more, then the biomass of the rabbit will be less, snake will be red, and eagle will be less. It means the grassland ecosystem will be erect in both, that you have to remember. In pyramid of number as well, in the pyramid of biomass. Forest ecosystem. Look, the forest ecosystem was irregular in irregular shape in <coughs> pyramid of number, but this is erect in pyramid of biomass. The tree is single, but the banyan tree have a large, huge mass. The mass of the bird and deer will be lesser in comparison to banyan tree. The mass of the snake and wolf will be lesser, and the loss of the loin will be least. Right. So forest ecosystem. The pyramid of number, it will be regular. In pyramid of biomass, it will be pond ecosystem. Look, the pond ecosystem, it was the erect in pyramid of number, but this is the inverted in pyramid of biomass. The zooplankton are numerous in number, but their biomass is very small. Small fishes, their biomass is larger than zooplankton. And large fishes, their biomass is far more large. Right. So, this is the inverted. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Pyramid of energy will always be erect. Why? When the energy is transferred from one trophic level to energy, another trophic level, it will be definitely less. 10% law is not clear. But because at the every trophic level, the loss of the energy will take place. So, pyramid of energy will always be upright. Okay? Very, 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 very important. So, who is going to tell me what is the success of this? Now, I want the answer from your end. What is the success of this? What is the successor? Look. In succession, there is a. So what is the succession? Succession is like you must have uh, studied in history. A king is ruling at particular place. The king A, then what will happen? His son will become the king. 
so he'll be successor of his father now the son of this successor it too will, will be succeeded by his son that is third successor after that someone attacked and defeated them this fourth person who is invader he will become the successor this fourth person invaded by the third person he succeeded he will succeed by this way we will when we will uh, make the succession then we will say that in particular year he was the prince it was succeeded by another king it was succeeded by another king so these are the successor are those which take the command of that particular area take the control of that particular area they are called and dominate on that area that is called succession same thing happen only plants time to time successor changes right suppose that and it would happen something sometime or like in mountain nowadays mountains are surrounded by angels from gymnosperm but previously when the vegetation was not there then what was there there were naked rocks so first what will happen first in those area lichens will lichen will reside in those area they will let the moisture and all that after some after the lichen there will be uh, there will come some mosses then the mosses will come after the mosses there will come some fern and all that right the fern will come then what will happen after that after coming out the fern after thousands of layer uh, they will break the rock they will make more soil they will add more moisture after that what will happen thousands of year there will some uh, bushes will come then gymnosperm will come then angiosperm will come so this is the success so this is story the first comer means first arrival like who arrived the first they were the lichens so lichens are called pioneer community so pioneer community is that who have arrived the very first time in that naked area the area which is not green there the area where plant is not there right so those who arrive first they are called the pioneer community finally the angiosperm dominate on their area and they the succession get stable so the last one who are the last arrival right they are called climax community and the people who come between the pioneer and climax community right those the member which come between the pioneer and the uh, climax community they are called seer right who are the seer like uh, gymnosperms are the seer fauns are the seer uh, teredophytes are the seer right so they are called seer. so this is called success this process is called success right so you have to remember here have been asked as a question medical so you have to remember the primary primary uh, pioneer community climax community and seer now the succession can be of two type look the succession can be of two type primary succession so suppose that previously there was no life there was a naked mountainous rock and if succession is start over there this is called primary succession right so where no living organism ever existed and life or succession started over there that is called primary succession what is the secondary succession suppose that in the hundred of year before there were some forest in those areas right those forest caught the fire and they were completely burned by the fire even not a single living organism is, uh, existed over there now what happened after 50 or 100 year again the life started over there this is called secondary succession so secondary succession takes place in those area which lost all the living organism and vegetation and again the succession is start over there this is called primary succession and secondary succession okay now the succession of plant can be of two type again this one it can be of hydrarch and xerarch when the succession takes place in water this is called hydrarch are or the hydrosphere second zero are when the succession take place on the land or rock this is called zero look pioneer community climax community and between them there is here this is the hydra right means succession in water this is very 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 important for you why 
number of the question like read swamp history the question has come which of the following is amphibious streams this kind of question right uh, which of the following is rooted submerged this question this kind of the question have been which of the following is amphibious state this question have been asked five or three or four times right so uh, suppose that there is a pond there is just water this pond recently the pond have been made or man made or artificially or naturally made but that 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 is uh, there is a no vegetation over there so what will happen the first arrival means the pioneer community will be phytoplankton so first time we will arrive there phytoplankton there will be algae or blue green then what will happen after hundreds of year after there were there will come some rooted submerged plant their complete body will be inside water but they will be rooted right they are not free floating like the phytoplankton this will be rooted submerged state then some plant will come who are rooted in the soil but their larger leaves are floating on the top right these are called rooted floating state at this stage now what will happen they will they will start evaporating the water right and they will start making the larger roots right now the water will water level will start falling in that pond then what will happen the plant will come which is called sesmant a ses, uh, reed swamp stage these plant will be half of the body will be out of the uh, 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 pond pond half of the body will be inside the water they will evaporate they will be of larger leaves they will have very large leaves they will evaporate the water in very fast pace I mean they will reduce the level of the water of the pond very <coughs> fast pace then what will happen the all the water will almost exhausted and it will become a mud then there will be ses meadow stage at mud level they will also evaporate the water frequently then the water will dry and the formation of woodland stage will come at the climax community the formation of the uh, uh, this forest will come out there so this is the stages of the hydrosphere means stages of the succession in the world tell me guys is it clear or not arpit clear samaira yes iram yes sir very good sania clear ana yes, very good ana abhinav yes sir nimra nimra please tell me either send me messages or yes sir it's clear very good very good right so look what is the important now i will uh, i have written something over here uh, here is not this one i request you to learn all the examples which i have mentioned over here right so the question have basically been asked from here so in phytoplankton stage the, uh, the soil of the ph will be less than 5 that you have to remember then who are who will the uh, uh, pioneer community so in water or in uh, hydrosphere the pioneer community will be blue green algae green algae and diatom they will arrive the first after hundreds of the year then rooted submerged state will come who will be the uh, uh, hydrilla velisteria and utricularia these plant will be will arrive over their area they develop this soft mud and mud from outside will come and water will become shallow uh, shallow then rooted floating stage the example nilambo means lotus nymphia tropa azola they will come now the water depth will become 2 to 2 to 5 feet the plant will have rhizome and large floating leaves fourth number reed swamp stage is called amphibian stage i have told you this question have been asked four or five times reed swamp stage and nymphia and trapa these are they have been asked multiple time as example i have underlined them amphibious state most bay, uh, uh, most part of the plant body remains outside of the water trapa and sagittaria rhizome form the dense vegetation ses meadow stage in this ses meadow stage mat like vegetation towards the center this is question mat like vegetation will be formed at the center of the pond means there will not be water dense vegetation with rhizome high rate of the transpiration this question i've been asked high rate of the transpiration and much loss of the water mostly are the uh, mostly uh, mostly are the uh, 
sharper gradually, right? Now what will happen? Cypress and Jamtas are the examples. Woodland stage. In woodland stage, soil will become drier and most of the time of the year, development of the terrestrial plant like hops, example populus and allus, humus accumulation start in those area. Mineralization and soft soil lead to the uh, sorry humus circulation will start in this area that is important humus formation will take place mineralization of the soil will lead to the uh, fast uh, uh, formation of the soil then forest exchange this is the climax community alnas and quarkas are the fine right so this is the what you have to remember you have to remember the example the most important thing is the example right and the things which i have underlined over here that you have to remember in fact that you have to crack now tell me if you have any doubt, any question regarding whatever we have studied today. Anyone? No, sir. No question. Sir, can you explain the sear part again? Sear, yes. Look. Here you can see the which is the look. I, I, let me explain from the here only. The phytoplankton stage is the first one, right? That is the pioneer. Woodland, this forest is the climax. All those members, rooted, rooted summer, rooted floating, reed swamp, sage meadow, woodland, these all are shear. So all those stages or member which come between the first one, that is the, uh, the pioneer one and the climax, they are called these, the member which are in between, they are called shear. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So clear to all of you? Yes, Fine. sir. Yes, Very sir. good. So go through with your answer after the class, as usual, I told tells you that go through, go through with your NCRT, go through with these PPT, solve the previous year question paper. That is